lawyers have um, a very difficult task in advising the pharmaceutical companies because they have to be alert by all the changes in the legislation which applies to any part of in any particular sector of the law but in addition of that they really need to cross refer to other areas of law. Um, I do not believe that a pharmaceutical lawyer can just say well I advise on regulation and not knowing the competition legal framework and the, the, the competition implications um, linked to it. For example, um, if a lawyer is advising on how is the best strategy to put in place to maximise an effective access to the market and how to maximise the IP regulatory rights which are afforded by the legal framework, then they should keep in mind the potential effect of that strategy in the light of the competition rules. And the Competition Commission um, has been extremely aggressive in tackling um, what they consider to be breaches of competition law in the patent field by containing settlement agreements that they consider to be anti-competitive or in the regulatory field by containing, for example, AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca sorry, for misusing the regulatory legal framework. So um, you cannot be a lawyer in your little cocoon. You really need to get out there and really know how those different practices interact. And in advising, you need to have expert on competition, on patent, commercial expert as well, depending the area, and the regulators. All together make the strength. And I think that saying a lawyer can alone advise a pharmaceutical company in all those respects and it can highlight the issues, it can bring to light the challenges, but it's really a strong team. And I think that's why this book is not just all about regulations, it's the regulation and other areas of interest. And I think that makes the strength of the book.